Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Uh, yes, a good morning from my garden. Today, again, a massive video, four amazing Bitcoin charts, trading tip, travel tip, live advice, and news. Will Europe accept Bitcoin as a legal tender, yes or no? Let's see, I found a beautiful article, I wanna talk about that. Let's quickly jump into the charts first to show you what Bitcoin is doing. As we saw a small crash from 52 to 51K, people refer to this nowadays as a crash. This is not a crash, this is a healthy small pullback that will propel Bitcoin again to new highs in my honest opinion, and if not, just buy the dip. Now let's quickly look at the charts, bam. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. We can see that massive amount of resistance there at the 52,300 level. There's a huge volume on the right side. You can see this in a yellow blue area, guys. Now, we again see this red candle downwards, but we again see also a large wick forming at the moment. This candle is going to close in around two hours, my time at the moment when I'm recording this video, of course. Um, if this candle again has this huge wick to the bottom and a small body just like we saw over here and just we saw over here as well in the left corner down there every time when that happens body with a huge wick we go up body with a huge wick we go up body with a huge wick we could again go up we want to break that ceiling over there, yes, here, that resistance of 52,500 to be able to go and grow to 60K. I'm going to show you now a couple of the charts that will make you understand why I believe that 60K is still a very valid play. And yes, the Bitcoin family indicator setup did a really good job, as you can see in buying and selling at the right moments, guys. Now, let's quickly jump into those charts. The first thing I want to show you is this weekly crypto asset flows chart in US million dollars. Uh, last week, a total of 2.45 billion US dollars flowed into the Bitcoin spot ETF. 2.45 billion dollars in a week. We are just getting started. We can see the increase from the beginning every week more. From 600 million to 1.1 billion to now 2.45 billion Bitcoin spot ETF inflows in a week very impressive numbers then you need to always take a look at the news because now the bitwise ceo says their spot bitcoin etf was approved for full access to advisors at the 30 billion nationwide ria one of the largest in the country so now the bitwise ceo now even saying hey yes the inflows are massive but there is another 30 billion for the grabs because they will now also get full access, all those advisors, to advise their clients to add Bitcoins to their portfolio. And if that is not all, BlackRock and Fidelity now own a combined 203,609 Bitcoins worth 10.6 billion for their spot Bitcoin ETFs. These are insane numbers, guys, in the first month of that Bitcoin spot ETF. That is why there is a lot of buying pressure and why these long wicks are created every time because all the dumps are being bought up only already by all the spot ETFs. Not even the retail that is forming in. That will all start later in this bull market. As you can see on this beautiful chart over here, the Bitcoin ETFs versus the gold ETFs. Gold is 93 billion US dollar. Bitcoin 37 billion US dollar at the moment. We are just getting started. This is like one month old. The gold ETF is like years, decades old. And they only have 93 billion built up in all those decades. We are already at 37 billion. This is gonna be insane. This is gonna destroy all records. It's gonna destroy the gold ETFs. And after it has destroyed the gold ETFs, it will also destroy the gold market cap. But that's like in 10 years time, I believe the digital gold, the gold of the 21st century Bitcoin will be bigger than the physical gold, the traditional gold. On this chart, guys, is a very old chart. I think the chart is made seven years ago, somewhere over there, uh, all the way in 2017. That chart has been right since it has been created. At the moment, we are fighting that pinkish line again. 
just now look back to the past, every time when we were fighting that pinkish line, what happened? It will take some time to break that pinkish line, but when we break that pinkish line, we will slowly crawl up to that red line at the top. Only the previous bull market in 2021, we didn't reach that top red line. And why? Because we had a distribution top, two tops. Just combine these two tops in one blow of top and we would have reached that red line again. Now it went up, came down and went up. So we were less explosive, so we didn't touch that red line. That doesn't mean we won't be touching that red line now. And that red line now is around 240,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. So if we break that pink line, we could go all the way to that 240,000 US dollar line, that red line there on the top. Beautiful chart that was created seven years ago and never adjusted and is still showing a beautiful trajectory for Bitcoin. Then we have this chart, the halving price index. We are currently in that white line. We are now at 6.1 times the price that we were at the halving. The halving, of course, was in May 2020, was around $8,572. Now we are six times higher. We will end up, in my honest opinion, a little bit higher, somewhere around the 6.4, 6.5 times, around that 50 to 55K will probably be the halving price. And then a new line will start completely on the left of the child again at that level one. And that will be the line of the halving of 2024. And that line will then start, let's say, on 50K, at that number one, completely on the left, where all the three lines started, maybe that will be an orange line now, Epoch 5. And from that moment, it will take again four years to the next halving in 2028. And that halving price then is going to be X time the previous halving time. And that previous halving time, we just said, could be, for example, 50K, if we end now at 50K. And from that moment then again, let's say we only go times four, then the next halving could be 200K in 2028. And then it's just a halving in 2028. And then the bull market still needs to start. So if the halving price in 2028 could be 200K, just imagine the bull market bringing Bitcoin then to maybe 600K to $1 million per Bitcoin, maybe in 2029. Amazing job. You need to pause it and analyze it and understand exactly what I'm saying. There is, of course, still bearish people in this market. But if I look at this chart, and if you look at this chart, do you still think there is a bearish scenario? Look how that dotted trend line with the green circles was resistance for a very long time. And look how we broke that resistance and now formed support on that line. Now we also are breaking that top horizontal line which is the most important resistance line in the previous bull market. If we continue like this, I don't see any bearish scenario anymore. I don't see the possibility to buy Bitcoin at 30K, 31, 34, 38K. I see us going to 60K and maybe then see a correction to just below 50K. That is what I see when I see these charts. And yes, I'm not a financial advisor. I've just experienced three full bull cycles, so there is some experience, but I'm not a financial advisor. But if it is up to me, that moment where we are now, in the four-year cycle, just before the halving, massive liquidity, new liquidity of all the spot ETFs coming into the market, this will all lead to a massive supply shock. And a supply shock means the price will go up. It doesn't mean that the price will go down. There is not enough Bitcoins on the market for the demand that we can see at the moment. And everything is transparent, trackable in the blockchain. We see the demand. We can track all the addresses that those spot ETF companies are using to accumulate Bitcoin. The demand is massive. There is not enough Bitcoins. The market is drying up. It will become a huge supply shock. So I can only see the price going up. I would be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin every day at the moment. I just love these charts, especially that gold and Bitcoin spot ETF chart. 93 billion in gold, 
already 39 billion in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is slowly crawling towards that gold spot ETF level. It will probably overtake that gold spot ETF level as it looks now because more and more and more of these long-term holders of gold start to understand, hey shit, there is a new person on this industry and it's the digital gold. Let's go for the digital gold because everyone is talking about the digital gold. Even Elon Musk has digital gold and MicroStrategy has digital gold and El Salvador and Brazil and Argentina. Uh, probably there is something official with this new digital gold because even BlackRock is now supporting it with a spot ETF. Let's exchange that physical gold that we can't transfer all over the world to the digital gold slowly. And that is how Bitcoin will overtake the spot ETF market cap and in my Honor's opinion, we are gonna go for the complete gold market cap that's like around 9 to 11 trillion in the future as well. Bitcoin will be huge, and because Bitcoin is gonna overtake that market cap, and because you know, because you watch these videos, that Bitcoin only has 21 million Bitcoins, of which probably like 3 to 4 million are already lost. We are almost at the full cap of Bitcoins. Yes, mining will take to 2140, but considering there's a lot of Bitcoin loss. Hmm, you know, we could be around that 17 million Bitcoins. That is the maximum capacity that we'll ever see the market. So if you are a Bitcoin hodler at the moment, only one Bitcoin, you will be a millionaire in the future because we will surpass the gold market cap. And that would mean that Bitcoin would go beyond $1 million per Bitcoin, guys. Now, cool charts. Let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today is a very important trading tip for all my Dutch followers. Because I know you all received an email from Bybit and Bybit mailed you, hey, from the 5th of March, you can't use certain amount of products anymore on the platform because the Netherlands doesn't want you to become rich. The Dutch government and the EU government and the Mika law and all that stuff wants to keep you poor. So you can't trade with derivatives, future contracts and all that stuff anymore. But now I have this perfect solution for you guys. I've been using the solution, I've been testing the solution, it's working and it's only around $200 per year. You can now apply for a Palau residency for $200 a year. You get a digital residency, but you need to have the physical ID. So you need to apply for the card as well. It will take one or two weeks before you receive that card at home. This ID card gives you a Palau residency, makes it possible for you to sign up to a shitload of exchanges, including also Bybit. You just need to use a new email address, this Palau ID card with all the numbers and everything on it, and then apply for a new account at Bybit. To be very clear, you can't use the Palau residence yet for proof of address but you can use it to sign up to these exchanges to level one. And signing up to level one on these exchanges is mostly up to withdrawing like five BTC per day. So most of you won't be using that full capacity of level one. But if you want to have a proof of address, for example, verified to get your Bybit card and everything, you need to wait a little bit longer. But as long as you understand it is possible for you to apply for Palau Residence use a new email, sign up to Bybit with that residence and keep trading all the products that you have been trading at the moment. And of course, it's also possible that your wife or one of your kids, if they're 18 plus, keeps using the Bybit Dutch license uh, with the debit card attached. So then your, the Palau residence Bybit sometimes sends some funds to your wife's or child's Netherlands Bybit account so that you can use it on your Bybit card. Because everyone who applied the Bybit card before the 5th of March will still receive the Bybit card. And yes, everyone that already received the card before the 5th of March can still be using it afterwards. So you just need to set up a new account with a new email address, preferably with a Palau residency. And then yes, you can keep using the Bitcoin family bot that makes you 3% a month and also still join the signals on the signal group and everything else, guys. So the training tip for today, get your Palau residence. It's only $200 a year that will save you a lot of stress with signing up to these exchanges. And even, even the most beautiful part, of course, is it's 0% tax in Palau. So every profit that you make with your Palau residence is 0% tax, of course, because it's a Palau income of a Palau resident. Yes, do your own research. Check that website. The link is down below. Please use that link. 
I'm not educating you for nothing. Use that link to sign to Palau. And yes, you will be able to use that referral link for your friends again and get some bonuses and all that stuff. Back. Now, trading tip for the day, Palau residents, sign up to Bybit and keep trading. Bam. The travel tip for the day is a travel tip that I have some experience with. <laughs> That'd be a surprise. Um, it's about alcohol. If you go to other countries like Thailand or Vietnam or whatever country it is in the world, they have these cheap brand local alcohols that will give you a headache the day after. So if you want to order a gin tonic, for example, please order a Bombay or a Hendrix gin tonic or any of the good brands which won't give you a headache the day after. Because if you don't, specific, because if you don't specifically ask for a Hendrix gin tonic, they will give you that cheap, for example, Thai brand gin tonic that will definitely get you a headache the day after. So I have experienced this now a few times. You know, I order the first two, I say, hey, Hendrix gin tonic. And then after that, I get a little bit drunk and I forget to order Hendrix and they give me the cheap Thai ones. Yes, they are cheaper. Oh my God, that gives you a headache the day after. It's not only the gin tonic, it's the rum, it's the whiskey. All of the alcohol you can think of, they have a local version of it that will give you a headache. So the travel tip for the day is, if you're not used to drink too much, then please stick to the brands that you know that you can handle because these other brands might be stronger or might be poison. You don't know, but that you get a headache is for sure. That was proven to me now like a few times. From now, I will only drink, I don't drink that much anymore, only in the weekends, but I will drink a gin tonic of Hendrix or Bombay or one of the more beautiful brands or a rum. I will do the Bacardi of the Havana or one of these brands, but not the cheaper ones anymore because believe me the headache is hot now let's jump into the next part of course this travel tip was not for the younger among us you should not drink that's really terrible for your whole body don't drink too much <laughs> i think that you're all laughing now now let's quickly jump into the next part and the next part of course answering one of the questions of the followers the question was didi how do you handle the schooling I know sometimes I'm repeating all these questions, but there is many questions asked double. So now and then I need to talk about them again in a new video. So new people that are new followers are also educated about the way how we handle stuff in life. Now, how we treat schooling, we don't school them anymore. So in the beginning, when we started to travel, we did unschooling, which means we just didn't spend any time to schooling. We just wanted to unstress, de-stress them from the whole schooling system. Because in our honor's opinion, when we started eight years ago, that schooling system was kind of raping the brain of our children. Is that like nicely said? Maybe I should say it a little bit different. That schooling system in the Netherlands was kind of disrupting, disturbing, and destroying the creativity of the brain of our children. Maybe that's a little bit nicer than raping, but it still felt like they were raping the brains of my kids. But at that moment, we decided, nah, let's stop that. Let's just let them first come back to earth, back to the normal world, back to living life, back to not stressing about grades and being better than their other kids in the classroom and all that stuff. Just let them be kids. From that, we went into homeschooling. So we started to educate, for example, Jessa to write and read because she had never seen school. So on the beach, we wrote A, B, C, D. And that's how we taught Jessa the alphabet on the beach. And from that, we took it a step further. Of course, we went online schooling. And online schooling, because the kids were getting this feeling of, hey, after three months of traveling, they were like, hey, we want to learn. We want to learn again. So we provided them all the stuff that they needed to learn. We used to use an online school, and at online school, there were teachers, because when you do teach your children for three, four months, they get sick of you, they're like, oh, dad, you're my father, you're not my teacher, oh, mom, I can't uh, listen all the way to you, and then you crack into an online school, and then online school, again, takes it a step further, they guide them during the day, what you can do, which homework, which apps to download, how to do a language study, etc., 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 and from that again, we went a little bit more to unschooling, because we found that during that period, of that whole fake flu show that our kids were not having any issues in their brains because they were not allowed to go to these classrooms and all that stuff anymore because they were already used to homeschooling, online schooling and unschooling. So we let it go. We said, if you want to learn, you come to us. We give you all the possibilities to learn. 
If you want to go in a course or to universities or whatever you need, we will make sure it happens. If you don't want to do it, then you don't do it. We don't want to put pressure on them anymore and just let them grow and flourish as a beautiful flower does in nature as well. And yes, of course, they can all read and write and calculate and speak English and Dutch and a little bit German and Spanish and all that stuff. But we decided to let it go because we see the development of this technology. We see the development of AI. We see that the development of your iPhone even be becoming smarter than you. That's why you're always using Siri. That's why you're always using ChatGPT. All these tools that will be available because of the evolution of technology will demolish all the knowledge that your children have been learning in school. It's unnecessary anymore because the technology is ahead. If my kids want to do some calculations or write a beautiful book or a report, they will start to use ChatGPT. They will say to ChatGPT, hey, can you write me a blog about Bitcoin and gold and Peter Schiff and Peter shit, whatever, and ChatGPT will write it. So now, it's important for us to start to focus on training our kids on how to use these technologies. How do you use these technologies in a way that you're ahead of the curve, ahead of all those sheeple children that are all brainwashed in the same way, in those same schools, their heads full with the Second World War and the First World War and all that history shit. How do you compete with these children in the future? By preparing my kids for the future not for the past. Memorizing books about the past will not bring your kids any further. Memorizing books about certain stuff that is, can be automated won't bring your kids any worse further. You need to prepare your kids for the future, not for the past. And that's what we are doing. If you want more information about that, then join the Bitcoin family group, guys. We talk about all this stuff many times. And yes, we can also do a one-on-one -on -one call. But by now, um, I started to charge for these one-on-one -on -one calls because, yes, it's too busy else for me. And I don't want to be too busy. I want to be relaxed. But today is a very busy day. Let's move on. Can Bitcoin become a legal tender in Europe? Just like El Salvador announced Bitcoin as a legal tender, probably um, now, of course, Argentina will do it. We have Javier Millet as well. Brazil, maybe Mexico, maybe many countries probably will make Bitcoin a legal tender. But can Europe become a legal tender? That's the question now. At least one minister in Germany does believe Bitcoin should be a legal tender. Joanna Kotar is her name. Uh, not really sounds German, but she's a minister in Germany. And she is now doing this beautiful event, I think on the 22nd of February, and it's called the Bitcoin in the Bundestag in HF. And it's gonna take place on the 22nd of February. And she's gonna to try to convince all the other ministers in the Bundestag that Bitcoin should be a legal tender in Germany. So it's very exciting. I wanna see that presentation on the 22nd of February. Uh, that's like in a couple of days. And she's gonna tell all the other ministers there in Germany, Wir sollen Bitcoin akzeptieren als legal tender, weil das ist wirklich gut für die deutsche Ökonomie und werden wir weniger abhängig von der US-Dollar. Und das ist gut für Deutschland. So something like that, she's going to say over there, probably also back it up with uh, really good reasons instead of that, what I was saying now at the moment on my best Deutsch. But uh, Johanna Kotar is going to do her best to get Bitcoin as a legal tender in Germany. And of course, when Germany gets this as a legal tender, then the whole Europe will do this as a legal tender. And then Bitcoin will become that beautiful combination of a store of value, the digital gold of the 21st century, and that peer-to-peer -peer cash that we always dreamt of it to be, like the Satoshi white paper, of course, said. Now, aside of Germany, I already told you, in Spain now, Torre Vieja, the town that I'm going to visit this summer, they announced, hey, we want to start to educate all our shops and like stores and all that stuff over there in Torre Vieja, like restaurants, how to accept Bitcoin as a payment. We want to be the first like hub in Spain that fully integrates Bitcoin payments into the whole city. So you can see all these things happening now all over Europe. And these will keep happening because all these politicians will start to understand the importance of Bitcoin for their country. And there was, of course, villages and, and cities way before this Germany and Torre Vieja. If you go to Rovereto in Italy, it's a beautiful town, more than 40 stores accepting Bitcoin. If you go to Ljubljana, Slovenia, more than 400 stores accepting Bitcoin as a payment. 
So there's a lot of these cities, Switzerland, Zug. You go to the train station, you can even you know, buy Bitcoin at the ticket machine where you normally buy your train ticket. You buy Bitcoin in Switzerland. So there's a lot of things happening all over Europe that will lead to mass adoption of Bitcoin, which again is a reason for you to understand there is only 21 million Bitcoin. You should be buying Bitcoins now it's still affordable. At least if 50K is still affordable. But it will be 100K or maybe a million in the far future. So that's a beautiful return on investment if you start to buy now. So that was the news for the day. Oh, and by the way, that event that Joanna Kotar is organizing is not only for parliament members, it's also for normal people, regular people like you. You can all attend that event. I would love that all the Bitcoiners in that area would go there and just support Joanna Kotar in making Bitcoin a legal tender. Not by shouting, but just being there and showing Germany, hey, this Bitcoin community is massive, and yes, if decisions are being made or presentations are being given to all the other politicians there on the Bundestag, we will be there as Bitcoiners as well. The 22nd of February, check the schedule wherever you can find it on Google, but be there. And the last part of the video is, of course, the quote of the day. And today, the quote is, if you risk nothing, you risk everything. It's very simple but it's very powerful. Because if you never take a risk, you essentially risk everything else. All of that beautiful things that could be happening to you will not happen to you because you didn't take that one risk in the beginning, that one step that you need to take. If you don't risk anything, the truth is you're risking to lose everything. And there is a shitload of possibilities and opportunities for you to grab. You just need to take that risk. But if you don't risk it, you are risking everything. You will not have all those possibilities, all those opportunities, all those life-changing experiences, all of that. You miss out on all of that because you are too afraid to take that one small risk. If you risk nothing, you're risking everything. Very powerful quote. If you risk nothing, you're risking everything. Just think about it. Every time when you don't take that risk, you're deleting that whole future line that the risk could have given you. By risking nothing, you're risking all of that, losing all of that. Every time when you take this new risk, this new path of possibilities and opportunities could be created. This is very important for you to understand. By blocking it, by risking nothing, you're blocking your complete opportunities in the future. Those opportunities that could lead to the most beautiful moments in your life. Because you just want to risk nothing. That's terrible. Start to take risks. And when you start to take risks, you will see this new field of opportunities and experiences surrounding you that will lead into all these paths that you can't even imagine right now because you're too focused on fear of not taking that one risk. Please stop that. Change your mindset. Start to take risk so you don't risk losing everything. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and leave a comment and please share the channel as much as possible. I want to reach 75k followers before Bitcoin reaches 75k. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Tuesday. See you tomorrow on Wednesday again. Bam.